Hello and welcome to today's session. Thank you for joining. My name is Thomas Michael. Today's session topic is what's SAP? Uh, this is the absolute beginner's guide to SAP. So if you know nothing about SAP, this is the session that you want to be in. If you're a seasoned SAP pro, you don't want to be in this session because you already know all the things I'm going to cover. If you stick with me for the next 25 minutes or so, here's what you'll get out of this session. Um, I'll cover what SAP is, obviously, and I'll share with you some stats and some information why it's so important to have SAP skills these days. And if you feel ambitious and you think you want to get started learning about SAP, then I'll also share some tips on, on the best way to get started learning about SAP. My name again is Thomas Michael. I'm the CEO of the Michael Management Corporation. I've been in the SAP world for over 20 years. Um, I started as a junior consultant um, in the early 90s. Nowadays, I speak a lot at national SAP conferences. I wrote a book about SAP. Um, and if you ever have a question, feel free to send me an email. Here's my email address. I always am happy to share my thoughts and give you my two cents on, on questions. So let's get started. Who wants to work for these companies? Apple, Google, Microsoft. These are great companies to work for, obviously. They're all in the technology field, uh, nevertheless, good companies. Or how about any of these companies? So you've seen all of these logos before. These are all big, giant, global companies in any kind of industry, really. So healthcare, transportation, airlines, manufacturing, consumer goods, energy, services, banking. The point I'm trying to make here is all of these companies have something in common. And you probably guessed it, all of these companies use SAP. So when we talk about who actually uses SAP or what is SAP, SAP is a company. It's the largest business software company in the world. Uh, not a lot of people realize that. Um, but yeah, so when it comes to business software, SAP is the worldwide leader in it. In fact, 80% of the Fortune 1000 companies run SAP software. And I just read another study the other day that said 87% of the global 2000 companies run SAP software. So in, in fact, that's just about every large business in the world runs SAP software, or there's an 87% chance that they run SAP software. The other 13% that don't run SAP software they probably run Oracle, most of them. That's the number one competitor to SAP. Oracle has a, a, a similar software system, and they're the biggest competitor. But again, 87% of the market is owned by SAP. So most companies, by a mile, use SAP software. Um, in fact, this stat here, 270,000 companies run SAP software. I just read another study that actually pinned us at over 300,000, so that number keeps increasing. So about 300,000 companies run SAP software in 180 countries. Now, I had to look up this morning how many countries there are in the world, and Google says there's about 195 countries. So SAP software runs in 180 countries, so that's basically all over the globe, you could use this software. So what is SAP? It's a German software company. And SAP, it's, it's a German abbreviation. It stands for Systeme, Applikation and Programme, or in English, Systems, Applications and Programs. The company is headquartered in beautiful Waldorf, Germany. That's uh, about an hour south of Frankfurt, right next to Heidelberg. If you ever had a chance to go there, it's, it's really, really pretty. 
Um, but yeah, so they're they headquartered. This this giant company is headquartered in this tiny little village called Waldorf. Um, they have about 80,000 employees worldwide. And last year, they made about $23 billion in revenue. That's U.S. dollars. Um, that sounds like a lot of money, and it is, but it never really tells me anything. What, what is $23 billion? So I have a couple of comparisons here for you. Facebook last year made $27 billion. Google made $100 billion. Microsoft also around 100 or 90 billion. Apple made two over 200 billion dollars. So that gives you an idea where SAP ranks as far as um, in, in terms of size, right? So it's a very very large business, um, but compared to some of these other well-known names, it's 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 rather small if, if if you look at it that way. Now, why should you care about SAP? Um, I'm guessing you are in this session today because maybe you have a coworker and that coworker works with SAP and tells you about it. Or maybe your company told you they are implementing SAP and you're going to have to learn it. Or maybe your company already is on SAP and you just got a new job or a new role in that company and now you have to learn it. Or maybe you're applying for jobs and every job ad that you read says SAP experience required. Those are typically the reasons why people start emailing us or chatting with us saying, hey, well, how do I get started? What is this SAP thing all about? All right. So now I want to give you a couple of stats or reasons why SAP skills are so important and why you should probably care about it. Um, on LinkedIn, there's over half a million people just in the U.S. alone that lists, list SAP skills on their profiles. Uh, also, SAP has college training programs, and we currently have a quarter million students, college students, enrolled in training programs. So these are all kids that you know will graduate soon, and they already have a, a basic skill level in SAP entering the job market. So a lot of people already know SAP, and, and, and that's good because the job market is pretty hot. So let's talk about the most important, most interesting thing, jobs and salaries. Um, we, we get this question a lot where people ask us, oh, I work in so-and-so. Is that something that I can do in the SAP world, or is there a, a job in the SAP world for me? So I wanted to just list a few areas where people work in, in SAP. So some of the common SAP job roles. So for example, you might work in the finance world or accounting world, and that could be any of these areas, general ledger, accounts receivable, payable, asset accounting, controlling, doesn't matter. Anything related to finance, there is plenty of common SAP job roles in that area. And if you're not in finance, maybe you are in logistics or what SAP calls the supply chain management. For example, you might work in sales, right? If you're a sales rep, you probably work with a CRM system. It could be SAP's CRM system, or you work in distribution or procurement. You purchase stuff. Same thing. There's lots of common SAP job roles in here. Same with warehouse management or inventory management. Also, people always think that when you work with SAP software, that means you have a desk job. You work in an office. Uh, not so at all. So, for example, you might be um, working on a loading dock at the warehouse receiving materials, and you still can work with SAP. So this is not related to just desk jobs. Uh, maybe you work in human resources, and you are a personnel administrator or run payroll for your company, or you are more on the analytics side, and you know how to run reports, and do data mining for big companies. That's a very hot area these days. Or maybe you are more on the technical side. You could be a system administrator or a programmer in SAP or maybe even a database administrator. Those are all areas where you find a lot of different common SAP jobs. So it's not just an accounting system. It's not a supply chain system, not just an HR system. It's all of these things. 
And I pulled some stats here for average salaries. Now, before you get all excited about these numbers, I want to put an asterisk next to it. Uh, these are average salaries that we pulled. Um, and these are salaries for people with a minimum of five years of SAP experience, right? So if you're new to SAP, obviously you will not reach these salaries just yet. Right? Nevertheless, I wanted to share them with you just to show you what the opportunity is. As you can see, there's different roles in SAP. You could be a project manager, you could be an analyst, you could be an end user, a consultant, a, or a technical developer in SAP. Again, there's a there's a big variety of job roles in there. And it also it does it matters, of course, if you live in Houston or if you live in New York City. Right? Here alone, there's a 40% difference in average salaries. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that these are very high salaries, all six-figure salaries. Right? We broke that down into, into uh, the different job categories here and looked at different cities or the major cities in the U.S. And we did that on Indeed. It's all public information. You can just log in and do a search yourself um, and you find all these salaries. Uh, as you can see, these are all $100,000 plus jobs. Again, this is with a five-year experience, and these are average salaries, so some people will make more money, other people will make less money, right? But the average salaries are very, very attractive in this area. Uh, in fact, the outlook for SAP jobs is very good. Uh, CNN Money did a uh, study on this or an article on this a few years back where they ranked the 100 best jobs in America and number 51 on that list was actually an SAP job, an SAP consultant uh, uh, related job. And also the Bureau, US Bureau of Labor Statistics, they come out with, with uh, stats every year. They said that the job for an SAP project manager will increase, the demand for that job will increase 15% every year for the next, can remember, five years, 10 years out or so. Um, so these are very good job prospects if you want to enter the SAP world. Okay, so what is SAP then, right? I've, I've given you some stats on the job market. I've told you a little bit about the company, but I haven't really explained what the product is. Right? People always say, well, I work with SAP. They don't mean that. They don't actually mean I work with a company SAP. What they mean is I work with some of SAP's products. So and I want to talk about this for just a few minutes. Um, and the way I always explain it to my mom is this. Because when I first told my mom that I work with SAP, she thought that I fix computers for a living, which is, of course, not true. So I always ask, you know, do you know what this is? QuickBooks. And many people know. They understand this is a software that small businesses use to run their business. So, for example, here at Michael Management, we're a small business. We use this software, QuickBooks, for our own business, right? We run our accounting system on it. You know, we, we keep track of our customers and vendors. We write invoices in there. We do our payroll. Um, our accountant runs profit and loss statements and balance sheets and all that stuff. So that's what we use. Now, the question, of course, is, well, why couldn't a Fortune 1000 company use this? Why couldn't IBM or Apple use this software? And the answer is it's not big enough. All right. So IBM might have thousands of people logging into the system simultaneously. Well, QuickBooks couldn't handle that. Also, we know IBM has offices in probably 180 countries around the world. Well, this software doesn't come in 180 different languages, but SAP does. Um, also, we know the tax systems in and, and all these countries. They're different from one country to another. Uh, the currencies are different. The accounting standards are different in all these countries. So this software, this QuickBooks software, couldn't handle any of this stuff, but SAP does. So SAP can meet legal accounting requirements in the US just as easily as they can in France, Belgium, and Russia. Right? The software handles all of that. And that's the reason why SAP is so powerful. 
because it can be used in any location, any currency, any language, uh, any industry by any country, uh, by any company. And that's the reason why SAP is such a powerful solution and in fact the market standard for large businesses. So this QuickBooks, you know, that comes in a box that you can literally buy at Best Buy and, and, and install on your computer in an hour. SAP software doesn't come like this. Uh, SAP has a lot of different systems, and here's just a glimpse, an overview of some of their products. Um, when people talk about that they work with SAP, most people, what they mean is they work with an ERP system. Enterprise Resource Planning System. That's SAP's flagship product. That's the main core product. But they have a lot of other systems as well. So they have a different system called CRM. It's a customer relationship system. Um, the opposite of that would be an SRM system, Supplier Relationship Management. These are all different products that SAP sells and that company can choose to implement at their business. So it makes it pretty complex to understand all the different products that SAP offers. Um, I wanted to share some random screenshots with you because maybe you've heard from people that SAP is very um, cumbersome to work with or very complex and, and difficult. Um, and and I, I won't lie to you, yes, SAP is pretty complex and, and complicated to learn. It's not an easy software to understand and work with. Um, and in the old days, it was pretty ugly, to be honest. You know, when I started with SAP over 20 years ago, this is what the screenshots looked like. It was just this ugly gray screen with just some fields and buttons on it. Um, that's what we worked with 20 years ago. Now we've come a long way in the SAP world. So here are some, some random screenshots of SAP, what it looks like today. It's much more, um, there's a much more modern look to it. It's, it's, it's fresh, it's easy to, to, to work with. And it doesn't look like those old ugly gray screens anymore. Now that, Brings me to a point where I wanted to ask, you know, do you have any questions? Does this make sense so far? Does this help you understand what SAP is, why it's important to pay attention to it, um, why you might want to consider a career in it? If you have any questions now, uh, just type them into the chat box. Um, and you can, all, of course, always send me an email later. And I wanted to share... Two more slides with you. If, if you think this sounds interesting enough for you to get started or take a closer look at it, um, <clears throat> I wanted to tell you a little bit about us. Uh, Michael Management, we're the leader in online SAP training. We've been doing this for a long time. We have thousands of lessons on our website um, that you can go through to learn SAP. We have about 300 corporate customers. Most of those are here in the U.S. and we have about 10,000 students taking our SAP training at any given point in time. And here are some of the companies that use our training to train their own users on important SAP knowledge. Here, here's a question from, from Rama. I heard that this is very old technology and may not have much opportunities. So th that's actually an interesting comment, Rama, and thanks for, for participating. Um, I hope the stats that I've just shown you show that the prospects in SAP are tremendous, all right? So when companies implement SAP software, it takes them years to do so, and it costs a lot of money. Um, you know, large companies can literally spend hundreds of millions of dollars just implementing SAP, not just maintaining it, but implementing it. Um, so companies do that, of course, with a very long time horizon, right? They're not just going to use SAP for a few years and then pick something new. So these systems, once they're implemented, this will be around for decades, 10, 20, 30, 40 years and more. Um, 
The technology is actually constantly evolving. So for example, these screenshots that I've shared, um, these old ones, they don't exist anymore, of course, because SAP constantly evolves, constantly develops new applications. Uh, right now, the big move is SAP and the cloud. So, so I wouldn't say that SAP technology is old, quite the opposite. I would say they constantly work on updating it and, and improving it. So I hope that helped a little bit. Uh, Ahmad, you had a question. What is SAP One or Business One, you probably mean? Um, let me see if I can go back to our slides here. Here is um, this, a slide with some of SAP's products. All right. As you can see here, it's something called Business One on the right side. That's a solution for small to medium businesses okay so when when some somebody talks about they're working with sap business one that means they're working for a small to medium company and there's a different software system that sap offers it doesn't have all the functionality that you would see over here on the left side with a big erp system probably comes in fewer languages can handle fewer accounting standards that sort of thing Uh, another question, Rama. Uh, business intelligence. Business intelligence is another SAP system. Um, it's a reporting tool, an analytics tool. It can combine data from many different SAP systems and external systems too that allows you to do reporting and analytics. Any other questions? Type them in. I'll keep going here on my slides. Uh, I wanted to share... One slide, if you wanna get started with SAP. We have a training course called SAP 101, Basic SAP Skills. Um, that course typically costs $399 on our website. It's an eight hour course with a certificate. Um, but just by joining this call today, I wanna to give you $100 off if you wanna buy it. Use that coupon code SAVE100 and you get the course price knocked down to 299. Here's the link to it and we'll share that again with you uh, after the session. Um, that's a great way for you to get started with SAP and dive into the very basic navigation, hands-on navigation with SAP. After that, you will typically then pick an area that you wanna specialize in, in SAP. All right, so maybe you work in accounting or you have a degree in accounting or a background in accounting. So you would probably want to take some training courses in that area. Uh, maybe you don't work in accounting and you work in supply chain. So then you probably you know, want to focus on that area. All right? So look at your own um, background, your own skill set when you want to decide what area in SAP you want to work in. We get a lot of questions from people that say, well, what's the hottest area in SAP? What's, what's hot right now? Um, and the answer always is the same. It, they're all in high demand, these areas. Right. So I wouldn't look at it that way where I find an area that's really hot and then I go into it. I would do it the other way around. You know, find something that you're passionate about and that you have knowledge in or, or, or want to learn about and then go into that area. If that makes sense. Uh, another question. Rama, I would like to know about SAP HANA. Uh, that's another new buzzword that you will hear a lot. SAP HANA. HANA is a database technology that SAP invented um, and that's their new hot product. So in the next couple of years, a lot of these existing uh, companies that use SAP software will migrate their SAP systems to the new version called SAP HANA or you'll also see SAP S4 HANA. That's the, the official name for that new release. Okay, any other questions? We're almost at the end of our session here. Um, so again, use this coupon code. It's good till the end of the month. Um, you know, it's a good, like I said, good way for you to get started. If you have any other questions, please reach out to us. My contact information is right here. Here's my email address again, tmichael at michaelmanagement.com or you can follow me on Twitter. Listen to Thomas. 
And if you can think of any other questions after this session, I will try to answer them too. And with that, I thank you very much for joining us today. I hope this was helpful. I hope it at least got the, the you, know, you know, some thoughts into your head about SAP. And hopefully you'll join us for another webinar soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.